I hate to say many of us who predicted video games would be the next major frontier of Hollywood cash grabs were right, but here we are. And because the current state of Hollywood is as effective at their job as Kamala Harris's campaign team, we have yet another video game adaptation to bury in the landfill alongside Blood Rain, Mortal Kombat, and Castlevania. Borderlands is set in the distant future of when the hell ever and follows Lilith, played by the real Galadriel herself, Kate Blanchett. She's a no-nonsense bounty hunter who shoots first and asks questions later when she's requested by a man named Atlas to find and rescue his daughter, Tina. Tina was recently kidnapped by Kevin Hart's Roland. Alongside an absolute unit of a man named Krieg, the three fled to the nearby planet Pandora, Lilith's home world. One extremely high bribe later, Lilith travels to Pandora. After wandering around with no lead on Tina or Roland's whereabouts, Lilith happens across the most annoying fucking thing in the world, Jack Black as Claptrap. He conveniently knows right where Tina is and leads Lilith there where she meets Tina, fights Krieg, are intercepted by Atlas's men, and then Roland drives up up in what may as well be a cyber truck as the crew flees, who I'm going to affectionately call the Crimson Fuckers. The crew escapes the Crimson Fuckwads by killing the giant Thresher with one pair of rockets and getting over the gorge. In their downtime, the group winds up in a nearby city, where it is properly explained that Tina is the clone of an ancient alien race called the Iridiums, and she is needed to open a vault to get their stuff. This is also the point Jamie Lee Curtis is introduced, for some reason. What does she offer to the story? Nothing, moving on, the Crimson Tampons lock down the city, and the crew escapes through the sewers, because this wouldn't be a video game or adaptation without sewers. Down there, the crew encounters the Bloodshots, and then Roland gets the fake-out death Glenn treatment, and the rest of the crew escapes. Atlas communicates with Lilith, which gets her attacked by Tina, and the rest of the group leaves for the vault. Meanwhile, Lilith learns that she is, in fact, the Iridium descendant. After Krieg, Tannis, and Tina are confronted by Atlas and his goons, Roland arrives, and then Lilith arrives. She basically turns into Captain Marvel, complete with Fire Wing Cosmetic, which is only $29.99 per loot box, and she defeats Atlas's men, traps him in the vault to get hentied, and the movie ends. I almost don't know where to start. Everything from the pacing, writing, and characters, to the CGI, sets, and oddly tame nature of the movie clash like the Skyrim Civil War. I suppose the characters are the best place to start with, and the first question I have is why was half the cast hired from the nursing home? Let's start with Kate Blanchett. Galadriel. Wood. But why the fuck are you here? Did Eli Roth save you from a Colombian tire fire? Blanchett is a great actress, but I fear she is going through a midlife crisis right now by taking up this role. Worse yet, she looks like halfway through the filming, she just gave up. She's in her 50s, pretending to be in her 20s, in a movie based on a property that's old by today's standard, and she probably doesn't understand. Kevin Hart's the only one that feels like he's actually trying. Issue being, Kevin Hart only has two personas. Wacky, wavy, and inflatable arm flailing midget and regular dude. When he's just a dude, he can fit the role quite well, and there might even be some depth to him as an actor if given the chance, but he don't get that in this movie. And tiny fucking Tina is annoyance personified. As a character, she's flatter than the state of Kansas. Not that flat characters, positive or otherwise, are bad, but when they are more annoying than vegans announcing their veganism, I was really hoping when she stepped on the panel for the vault, it would activate a failsafe and she was about to lose a game of guess who's not the protagonist like the opening of Ninja Scroll. Sadly, that wasn't meant to be, and we have to endure her forced antics of I'm so special from the moment she's introduced to the ending that couldn't come soon enough. Amazingly, she isn't even the worst character. That title goes to Claptrap. His sole purpose in life is testing God's patience. I'm fine with Jack Black in either small doses or when he's reined in like Kung Fu Panda. In Borderlands, it's like Jack Jack Black watched the 2016 Ghostbusters and said, I'm gonna replicate that. Not only can you hardly understand half of what he's saying because he rapid fires dialogue like Eminem in a speed talking competition, but he has a robotic filter over his voice, making it that much more difficult. As for Krieg and Tannis, well, Krieg is here to grunt and deadlift trucks, but I don't think Batman could solve why Jamie Lee Curtis is here. And her performance is the worst in the movie. If it wasn't for the jumpsuit she's wearing, you wouldn't be able to tell her apart from the floorboards. She attempts to rattle off exposition and be a launch pad for character development, but her enthusiasm is mirrored by my sudden onset narcolepsy I was stricken with while watching this movie. The pacing of the story is awful as well. I don't know how you make an hour and 40 minute movie feel like the Fellowship delivers packages for FedEx, but Eli Roth pulled it off. 
partially because the action is unengaging. If it isn't the actors sitting on chairs in green screen rooms reacting to their direction, then they awkwardly pose for close-up sweeping shots like Eli Roth went to the Michael Bay Academy of Repetition. When the story does slow down for exposition or character development, the former turns to rambling while the latter is non-existent. The movie can't even get by on the humor it supposedly has. I know Biden voters who wouldn't laugh at this shit. And they're dead! There are a few jokes that run on like I mentioned about Deadpool and Wolverine, but beyond that, the rest fall flatter than a flounder. And who boy does the CGI suck balls here. If it doesn't look like that unpolished CGI we see so often today, then it's the rubbery CGI of the early aughts, like uh, Blade 2. And where was the threat supposed to be? Pandora is described as this hellhole on the ass end of the planet with psychos and monsters, yet the crew breezes through every threat like David Bell in a Mario game. Oh no, the Crimson fuckwits are shutting down the city. Ah, don't worry, we'll hide away in the garbage can that they won't check. Oh no, bloodshots, these are the psychos that even psychos are scared of, and there are so many of them, we'll be run over like the crew in Ghosts of Mars. Nah, don't worry, they like to stand around and get shot while also not using the mountain of firearms that they have. Oh no, a giant thresher that looks like the Shogoth from At the Mountains of Madness. Nah, a pair of rockets from our Cybertruck took care of that thing, no problem. There are so many more issues that could be dived into, like the unnecessary ad-lib, like the blatant one where Lilith is asking questions about the area, but when she turns in, we can see her face. Lilith isn't speaking. Speaking of Lilith, did Kate Blanchett know her character's name is Lilith? I almost had an aneurysm when Blanchett, looking just past the camera, says Lilith. I could keep going, too. Captain Sideshave of the Crimson Stool is driving her hovercraft like the disc ones from The Incredibles without a helmet or comms while rockets and gunfire blast off around her and everyone hears her orders while most of them are inside their own vehicles. It, it's not a high bar, but I wouldn't be surprised if Snorderlands retains the crown for worst of the year in most people's eyes. There are no redeeming qualities at all reflected in its opening weekend, which only scraped in under 20 million on a budget of 120 million. And in a year with Velma Season 2, Star Wars The Acolyte, and Rings of Power Season 2 in only a few short weeks, that's saying something. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.